Hello and welcome. This is the fifth video in a series of videos detailing the use of MasterFrame and MasterFrame Pro. In this video, we will again be looking at the use of the Create menu and specifically the Add Column command. In the previous video in this series, we looked at the more generic Add Member facility, whereas the Add Column function is a special case of adding a line member, however, uniquely as a column. In the Add Column, you get much of the same facility in the generic add member covered in the previous video, including the size of the steel section that you wish to provide. You can also specify the material as concrete, timber, or any other section that is in use. Within add column, you get much more control over the cross-section rotation, termed the beta angle in master frame. The beta angle can be defined by typing in a value to the beta angle box, or it can be determined in a number of other ways. The first thing to note in the add column facility is we have two modes of operation. We have a single select mode and a multi select mode. Let's deal with the single select mode. First of all, in single select mode, we can pick on a point to add a column. The levels at which the column will be generated are defined using the column Y values panel. The column can be defined either from a point or between two levels. When the column is defined from a point, it will be placed below or above that point. Simply by picking on the point, the column is defined and in this instance with a zero degree cross-section rotation. By clicking again, we can easily remove the column. If we change this value to 45 degrees, for example, we can see the effect when placing the column. The blue T symbol that you see when hovering indicates the cross-section rotation of the member that's about to be created. Again, we can use the undo facility again here for columns created. Conveniently, we can utilize existing angles of grid lines and beam ends to set the orientation of the column. From a plan view, we can see that as we move closer to the inclined grid line, the cross-section rotation is located on that point. The cross-section rotation can also be orientated about the minor axis, or perpendicular, to the lines that we select. So in this instance, you can see the proposed column rotated through 90 degrees, relative to the line that we are hovering closest to. It is always worth noting that the coordinate will always default to nearest point on the screen we are looking at. For instance, here in the plan view, the Y coordinate will default to the nearest point as we look on plan. For example, when we are adding a column on plan, and since the grid lines are drawn at the base of the structure, intersecting at the Y coordinate of zero, this will be defined as the point of placement of the column. However, when we move towards the structure, the nearest point to us now becomes the ends of the members, which will set a Y coordinate of 3.5, where the column will be placed above. It can be useful to again go to a particular level to carry out this function. Now, when working at this level, all the points selected occur at the same Y coordinate. In this instance, we would like to say that the column is being provided below this point. Another tip for when placing the column to see the orientation of the column upon placement, it's useful to draw the members short so that the orientation of the placed column can be more visible. As mentioned, the orientation of the beta angle can also be relative to not just grid lines, but also member ends. Here we can see the orientation of the member relative to the bracing member the member in the Z direction, and to the angled horizontal member on the screen. It's often more useful to define columns between two levels, rather than from a point. Defining columns between two levels allows us to control the start and end location of the column more explicitly. Here we can say we would like to go between the floor plan level and plan at level 1. Or we can work with the full frame view, and we can click points knowing that the start and end levels of the of the columns will be set between these levels and not relative to the point at which we pick. Whilst adding these columns, we also notice that we have the option to generate some support conditions at the base of the column where we can select pinned, fixed or none. Where the base of the column might intersect with intersecting members, such as a supporting beam, we can say that we want the support condition only to be applied where the end of the member is not connected to any other members. Support conditions can be altered using the nodal static support condition within the restraints menu at a later stage if necessary. Moving on from the single select mode, we can also operate in a multi select mode. In this mode, we can window sets of ends and intersections to place columns. Here we were saying that we would like to place columns at gridline intersections or beam ends. Let's just place columns at gridline intersections. Putting the structure in a plan view and placing the columns between the floor level and level 1. We are now going to say that we would like to put the columns at a beta angle of zero degrees. Windowing these points, we can see the columns going in precisely at the beta angle of zero degrees. If we window the same points again, the columns are removed. 
This time, let's say that the column cross-section rotation beta angle is going to be automatically aligned with the grid lines in grid set 2, which is the Z direction. This will mean that the columns automatically go in at the orientation of the grid lines in this direction. In single select mode, columns can be added at any point in space, not just grid line intersections and member ends, but at any point from tracking lines, from snap grid locations, and at any point along existing grid lines. This concludes this short video on the use of the add column facility.